Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have a review of Tristam's debut album, With Love Until We Die, or W-L-U-W-D, which is a lot harder to say. This project has been a long time coming, so I think it needs a little bit of context to set the scene first. Tristam has been on quite the journey over the past 10 years creating music, and he actually started off in the early 2011 days with the, uh, think of the hardcore Skrillex days, also doing some dubstep bro step. He then slowly over time evolved into this cinematic storyteller with drumstep, electro house, and various other EDM genres. His tracks were big, oftentimes emotional, and came about maybe three times a year. It was during this time where Tristam garnered a huge dedicated community that really loved his music and followed him wherever he went. If you ever cried to any of his songs, or watched his YouTube premiere for this album and or know what redacted means, I'm talking to you. And yes, I am very much included in that fan base. But for years, Tristan was pestered about when he would come out with an album, and the more that people asked and talked about it and leaked things or whips beforehand, the less likely it seemed like it was ever going to happen. And then, in October of 2020, everything went dark. All of his socials, everything kind of got weird, and he eventually would release the first song off of this album, Violence. And before that, the last release was actually two years prior to Violence, so there was <laughs> a lot of people were really, really waiting for some new Tristam, regardless of if it was an album or not. They just wanted some new Tristam. And more slowly also, his music became a lot more pop-oriented, where it kind of fused into this electro-pop kind of style of music. It's something that I would consider actually cinematic electro-pop, is how I would define Tristam and this album specifically. But we are finally here. The album is out. I've done my reaction. I've done my ranking. Time for the review, the final R. There was so much hype going into this project that I was afraid it may have disappointed a little bit. If it wasn't anything other than almost perfection or perfection, I would have been disappointed. And ultimately, I wasn't disappointed. I was super happy with how this album turned out. I do need to give a little bit of a disclaimer, I think, beforehand in saying that Tristam is one of my favorite artists of all time in any music genre, any music time period. He is one of my favorites. And so this is slightly biased, this review. I mean, it's hard. It's any Everything is my personal opinion anyway, so it's, it's all biased in that sense. But I'm going to try to be as objective as I can be and not be as subjective as I think I am with other projects, especially because I love him so much. So what is the secret sauce? Why do I like this project so much? Why didn't it disappoint? Why was I waiting seven years for this? Well, as I mentioned a little bit before, Tristam has this really, really unique sound design. It's got this kind of blending of electronic sounds and a poppy palette that is all kind of wrapped in a cinematic orchestral sound design. So getting into the grittiness of this review, I'm actually going to separate into three kind of sections and highlight three different styles of songs that go on uh, across this album. And those categories are big cinematic tracks, storytelling pieces, and bright poppy tunes. I think pretty much all of the 12 tracks on this album can be categorized into at least one or multiple of these categories. So let's start with the kind of cinematic tracks. I would say more than half of the songs on this project kind of fall into this category where they have this really nice elegant intro, a ramping build, and a just grandioso drop or chorus. Like Black Beauty, the first song off the LP. It does a marvelous job of enticing in the listener and indicating where the album is going to go narratively, sonically, and what you're about to journey with Tristam on in the next 45 minutes. It's got a beautiful melodic piano ballad to intro it with some nice subtle strings behind as well only for Tristan to come in with his raw stellar vocals that really take the project onto another level where he also layers his voice on top of one another to kind of get that amphitheater big room kind of sound and as the second act ramps up the drums come in and there's just these big giant swells that are coming in only for Tristan to kind of top it all off with a really high register vocal performance to kind of put the cherry on top just to have it all book ended by another calming piano ballad how I just described this one song of 12 is how I could describe a majority of tracks on this album there's just so much raw emotion energy and storytelling littered throughout this album that uh, you definitely need to give it a couple listens before you can I feel like really take in all that you need to. Take a Chance is another cinematic track that is similar to that, but a little more of a slow burn on this one, and all of it has a darker tonality to it because of the minor key. 
It's sadly the shortest song on the album, but boy does it pack a punch. The second and final drop has Tristram hit a register that is the highest on any other part or displayed on this album, and when paired with the orchestral production, the two just mesh together so well. So the next type of kind of categories of songs that I'm going to be talking about is the storytelling tracks on this album. And one could easily argue that all 12 of them are storytelling tracks, but I kind of want to talk about some of the most prevalent to me. But I need to go back a little bit because I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with the narratives and lyrical content that Tristan puts out sometime. Uh, like, let's talk about Far Away and Till It's Over in the past. Some lyrics, like, it's... It will start from the start or it's not over till it's over like i mean those are not great lyrics and for those songs in particular i'm not going there for the lyrical content i'm there for the production design primarily uh but i mean there is one small instance of it in this album it's from the track different and i really like it but it does have a part of the songs where it says i'm a little bit different and then later on says take away my only different it's just like okay could have picked a little different words there, get it? It's definitely not as egregious before and I can look past it. But for the most part, his lyrical content from in the, considering the past, looking at now, has become a lot more refined and focused. They are in no way the craziest, most heart-wrenching lyrics you've never heard before on any other artist, but they still do a really good job of conveying what they need to in the context of each track. For some people, Tristam's lyrical content is what makes Tristam Tristam for them. It's why they listen to him and it's what they love the most. For me, it's more a mix of a little bit of both, obviously, but mainly the production aspect of Tristram's music. But let's talk about what was good about this album. Over the Edge was a fantastic track that was paired really well with a music video that obviously came out with it as it was released beforehand as a single. It has the narrative storytelling of exploring the loss of a loved one, especially at an early age, and does it in a pretty compelling and fairly unique way. Can You Feel the Love is a bit of a hybrid between the both storytelling aspect of a song and the cinematic orchestral part, which is why I mentioned before that a lot of these songs fall into all of these categories. In this song, he kind of explores the ideas of being torn out and abused and kind of just cast aside from society and how one person can bring a lot of light into one person's life. This track is the second last track on the album and I think it just needs to be experienced. It's one that I, when listening to it, I just kind of close my eyes and let Tristan just kind of take me on a journey in where he kind of wants to take me. It's just like a dream state almost where I just close my eyes, put headphones on or something like that and I just I'm, I feel like I'm teleported to a different part of the world or a different dream state and I just get a kind of different experience every time I listen to it. It's one that's sort of uniquely you that really you get a totally different feeling out of that song than I think someone else would. But all of this comes to a culmination with the final track with love until we die the title track. And I think the song is just a beautiful mosaic of all those three categories that I talked about before. You got your cinematicness, that's even a word, the storytelling, and finally this one is your pop tunes. It starts fairly abruptly, but kind of in a good way that I just sort of love. As soon as it comes on now, I'm just like instantly perk up and I'm excited for it. It's got a flute sound of sort that kind of sets the scene and tonality for the rest of the five minutes on the song. And when mixed in with the kind of finger plucking of the acoustic guitar, well, there's your orchestral sound. And then the chorus hits, and it's relatively minimalistic. It's got this cheerful anthem of sorts that is just kind of sticks in your head like an earworm. The chorus is pretty much just that flute sound and Tristram singing with no lyrics over top, and oh, it's just nectar for the ears. It's got a bright poppy sound to it, just like other tracks like Mistake and Ruthless, which I'm not going to go over, but they are also stellar and there is your kind of poppy anthem part of the song. And wouldn't you know it, this track has everything. The storytelling on this, I think, is probably the best on the album. It is a compelling narrative that kind of just tells you to live your life to the fullest, for you could kind of die at any point. And it's kind of a bittersweet celebration of life and kind of just a reminder to just love those, love who you're with all the time, every day and just it's kind of like a YOLO but saying it in a more uh, narratively convincing way and it's pretty much an anthematic pop song in every way. It's got a bright and strong hook, a positive thinking narrative yet also realistic, and a stunning denouement that takes the track and the entire album wraps it all up and puts it in a neat bow. Okay, but just like any album review, I can't really go over every song. You guys need to know that because I'm not gonna go over all 12 songs in depth and how I feel about this. 
the video would be like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and you wouldn't want to watch that as much as something like this. But you just need to know that all 12 songs were a major hit for me. If I didn't go over any of the songs, it's not because I don't like it. If I didn't hit your favorite song, it's not because I don't like it. It's because I really don't have time. Ruthless is my second favorite song on the, al on the LP, and uh, I didn't even talk about it at all. But in the grand scheme of things, I wasn't even slightly disappointed about this album. It really did feel like it was worth the wait. I probably had the most time actually figuring out what I wanted to score this album for a few reasons. And mainly it was objective and subjective. I subjectively really, really love Tristam. All these songs were major hits for me. And so essentially, objectively, would someone else that doesn't listen to him at all, would they say this album is the score I'm about to give it? It's hard to tell, but I hope I did a somewhat good job convincing you why I'm about to give the score I did. Ultimately, this project has the very distinct cinematic electropop style that I'm kind of denoting it. And if those two-ish words fire you up, you love cinematic, you love electropop, you will love this. Tristan manages to pack all of this into a dense 45 minutes of orchestral sections that are just grandioso, compelling storylines, and bright poppy tunes. If I felt there were any small slip-ups on any parts of the track, they were immediately made up for just seconds later. Albums like this, for me, come around a handful of times in a decade, and now that we're pretty much a year and a little bit into the next decade, Tristam already gave me one of those albums. Everything that I love about music is kind of in this album. A lot of what Tristam has done in the past is why I'm making these videos, why I want to do this, why I want to talk about this, the way I listen to music and enjoy it in a particular manner. It's because of what Tristam's done, and this album is just a great indicator of that. This album is going to stick with me for a long time. And if you didn't expect it by now at this point, Tristam's With Love Until We Die album is going to score Bowtie Media's first 10 out of 10. But thank you guys so much for watching. I have been Bowtie Media. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you love this album as much as I do? Are you just grinning just at the thought of it and giving it a 10 and being so excited? Ah! I just want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think of the review, and I will see you guys in another video.